Hey. Hey, hey Gig. Hey. Hello. Hey. hey. Gentlemen, hey, congratulations on Chop and Steel. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Yeah. So, so tell us first, uh, how does it feel that this film is uh, being showcased at Chop uh, at uh, the Tribeca Film Festival this year? Well, you're you're talking to us the morning after the world premiere, and I think we're all still sort of walking on cloud nine. I mean, it was it could not have gone any better. We had. Um, a full house and you know with Nick and Joe being based here and so much of our cast and crew uh in attendance and I think we bought out about half the theater <laughs> so we uh there were the laughs were just uproarious and um and then Nick and Joe got to come out and uh, perform afterwards and it was uh it was just kind of a surreal treat for us then and, and uh we're still recovering from this morning. <laughs> well, it, it was surreal seeing my mom on the red carpet talking with Bobcat Goldthwaite, who like <laughs> I grew up watching him in Police Academy movies and then watching all of his movies now. And now my mom's having a conversation with him on the red carpet. It was just, it was like a weird dream. <laughs> Joe, you kept saying to me, this feels like a wedding. We yeah, what did it feel like a wedding? Yeah, just because parents are yeah. there, and people you haven't seen in 25 years. And then like Bobcat Goldthwaite's always at my weddings. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was like introducing high school friends who'd flown out from Wisconsin to Bobcat Goldthwait to the guy from the Yes Man, uh, Jack, and then like it was just like this confluence of you know people from your life. So it was uh, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, awesome. So Ben Baird, um, tell us uh, what sparked you guys to do this documentary. Well, Nick and Joe played a, a pivotal role in uh, Winnebago Man, which was a film uh, that we made uh, many years ago, and um, we've been friends ever since, and Nick and Joe were uh, hilarious in that, and um, I've followed the Found Footage Festival and um, knew that they could carry a movie, and so when they got sued by Grey Television, I basically knew that there was a film on our hands and that was uh over four years ago so this movie has been a long time in the making wow nick joe how what what did these how did these guys convince you uh to do this uh documentary after uh, winnebago man what, what what did they give you guys i think it was like you know i think uh, joe was like Th you know thinking like we should probably document this very tumultuous time in our our life you know and so um uh you know and ben and baron had brought up the fact that they wanted to do something with us so it just seemed like you know we're we, we don't have the resources to document this crazy time and we're kind of going through this like lawsuit and you know just trying to stay above water so um yeah i mean we were i think we were happy to have somebody like documenting this very like yeah, make we, or break t time. I mean, when, when we're having that many panic attacks, it's like there should probably be a camera on us because this is this is good television. Right there. You, you have this many panic attacks, there should be a camera nearby. So yeah, I called up Ben because and I was just like, yeah, this is happening right now. So it didn't take any convincing, but it it wasn't easy to have the cameras around all the time. We Nick and I have made documentaries before, and we knew that our subjects would get annoyed with us, uh, you know, what, during the process. And then I don't know, maybe there were a few times where I regretted calling up Ben and saying because uh, <laughs> they were just always there with the cameras, and you know, it's just. But I I don't know. The ends justified the means, and it's a great movie. So yeah, I think I think that discomfort helps with the with the movie. That's true. Well, and, and, you know, I just, that's a, this is a good opportunity for me to give props to Nick and Joe, because it's true that having a documentary made about you seems maybe on the outside, like it's fun, but it's actually <laughs> very intrusive, you know, no, it's the worst thing in the world. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, you guys introduced us to your wives and your girlfriends and your family and uh, your friends. And, you know, we were there at times that were not easy and we're asking you hard questions and, you know, making you think about things that you often did not want to think about um so uh thank you guys for that and you deserve lots of credit for allowing us to do that well yeah gig one thing i want to mention too is like with our show the found footage festival we don't call it the nick and joe show like the videos are the stars of our 
our live show. And we're from the Midwest. We don't really like to be the center of attention. We like to deflect off to videos and other things. So it is very weird being the subject of a documentary. And you guys having been, fil- but you guys having been filmmakers before, like you guys are kind of like cosmically in balance with the universe because you've done this before. You've you've intruded on people's lives before. Yes. So oh, yeah. now it's your turn. You're like, oh, okay. I know. Yeah. There's a both little bit sides. of there's an understanding there. Yeah. Yeah. Wait a minute. Yeah. Both sides. Mean, and you guys are going to make a documentary about me and Barrett next? That's that's the deal. <laughs> that's yep. the rule. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yep. <laughs> No, we, we've, we've seen both sides of the documentary process and neither are pretty, so. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, it is the 21st century, but you guys keep on, uh, Nick, Joe, you, you guys keep on finding these uh, rare uh, VHS tapes. Uh, when are you guys going to uh, start moving on to, uh, you know, the, the DVDs and uh, Blu- Blu-ray footage? Plus? Well, we, we have moved on to DVD. We're not proud of that. We don't usually say this publicly, but we have moved on to DVD. A few years ago, we started collecting those. We still say we, you know, we're VHS collectors at heart, uh, but there's some good shit on DVD. So, yeah, we're only human. Uh, yeah, not Blu-ray, though. We haven't gotten to Blu-ray yet, right, Nick? Well, I think the, the thing about VHS and what's so appealing about it is that it was a time where it was like, the first time where there is this format where you could easily record and produce things. And uh, it was wildly, you know, everybody had a VCR in their home. So because of that, you got a lot of weird and esoteric stuff on, on that format. And um, it, it was different, you know, if a Blu-ray cost more to produce and a DVD did for a while too, although we do find some funny stuff, but you know, we have 11,000 tapes. We've only watched a third of them. So we have enough VHS to last us, probably till retirement age um so yeah i think we'll we won't run out anytime soon i i can't imagine if you put those vhs tapes on ebay how much you actually gather i i I heard uh vhs tapes are going on for a lot (laughs) i know i wonder about that i mean maybe that's our ticket out of this hell hole that we live in right now i mean (laughs) i've seen some going for like pulp fiction still in the shrink wrap goes for twelve thousand dollars what? what? Uh, yes, it does. Wow. Yeah, I mean, it has to be like graded and like you know minted or whatever it's called. Like it's in mint condition or whatever. Wow. But uh, but yeah, I mean VHS right now. Like I mean, we might be sitting on a gold mine, uh, other than what we've been using it for. What but about what, yeah? What about if you guys did NFTs of VHS covers? I mean, we've gotten pitched on NFTs a lot, yeah. and uh, we we talk. We have a video that Nick found in a garbage can called Bunion Surgery. It was a hand labeled tape uh, said Bunion Surgery with really bad penmanship, and both Bunion and Surgery were misspelled. <laughs> and we thought about making that into an NFT because, like, technically we own it. Because, you know, it's just like a, home, it in a garbage can yeah. video. And we keep talking about doing an NFT of Bunyan surgery, but I don't know. It just I, doesn't yeah. seem like our thing. Yeah, I'd like to sleep at night with a clear conscience. So I don't think we're going to get in the NFT game. No. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. But I, the weird thing is, though, yeah, you see all those like graded VHS tapes now. And there's a market for those. The stuff we collect, there's no market for it. It's like how to trim your beard. Um, it's like, you know uh and a, and a religious exercise video i it's like i feel like we're the only ones collecting that type of material which is what our makes makes our show unique but these videos worthless to anybody else <laughs> <laughs> ben Marin, hey how did you guys get that footage at uh, the america's got talent i mean that was pretty sneaky Man, you know, that is something gig that I when I watch the movie still to this day, I just every time that scene plays, I cannot believe it exists. Because if you were to see the director of photography on this movie, his name is Priest Batten. He looks like He-Man. Like he often is just yeah, wearing I think a vest. He looks like Big John's. Oh yeah, I think, Big he looks like, I think he looks like Big John Stud from WWF. Yeah, shoulder length blonde hair, huge like Jesus style beard, often no shirt, uh, just ripped muscles. I mean, he stands out in every crowd, and he went in with them and somehow managed to be holding a camera that was recording the entire time. He filmed like we. It have- wasn't a small camera either. It yeah. was a pretty big camera. We have yeah. six hours of footage from that. I mean, he filmed nonstop, basically. And 
I don't know how he did it. I think he just somehow like used the sort of like the Jedi mind trick where they would ask him not to film. I, or maybe they didn't even ask him. I don't even know. He just somehow came out with, he perfectly captured the scene. So no, uh, it's we a, were it's there. A it was, a, we were. Yeah. Yo, go ahead. Yeah, Joe. we were there. It was a hundred percent Jedi mind tricks. It was a hundred percent. Like yeah. nobody asked anything. You remember that Nick? It was just like, yeah. Hey, around with the camera. And it was like, oh yeah. Yeah, he's, he's act like, like they're supposed to be there, you know. He yeah. has pure confidence, pure confidence <laughs> walking into a room. That's all it really takes. He's act like you yeah. belong there, and he. And it's you know, incredible. Funny and, little thing, as okay. he was waiting in the balcony, waiting for you guys to come on, he himself had to pee really bad, <laughs> and he held his pee held his pee for two hours until you guys came out and did your set. <laughs> and then did oh. he pee when he was filming? <laughs> he he did say at one point he doesn't like to repeat it, but a little trickle came out. <laughs> <laughs> so that was method yeah method director of photography okay. yeah that's a new yeah. that's a new thing yeah. <laughs> well, most excellent. Holding. <laughs> well most excellent gentlemen well i have to run because uh you know it's a busy tri tribeca day myself Absolutely. but i want to throw joe the last question, does that cat move behind you or or he stuck it like that? No, I stuffed it. It's my old cat. I stuffed him. I took him down to the taxidermy studio. And uh, yeah, no, he's a, he's a good kid. He's very sweet. Yeah. Pet pillow. Very realistic, though. It fools my other cats. I have real cats here, and it fools them too. So, yeah. well, it, fool, it fooled me because you know, on, on Zoom, I, I, I was like, that cat yeah. hasn't moved for the past. Ten <laughs> Very well, be stay, stay. <laughs> That's always. Oh my well, God. well, gentlemen, hey. Thank you very much for this conversation and congratulations for uh, Chop and Steel. Thank you for talking. Thanks. Thanks. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Thanks, yeah. Thanks Gig.